Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set up your classes and your student accounts so that you can assign them specific activities to use in Think Central. The first thing that you want to start with is building your class. If you hover over the Class and Students tab, you'll see an option to manage any classes you currently have. Maybe you've already set this up. If I click on Manage, you'll see that I have no classes. So I'm going to go up to the class and I'm going to select Add. I'll give it a class name. I'm going to use my last name and I'm going to put in the school year so that next year when I build my next class I can denote which one was from this year. It's important to select the grade. It pulls out some different resources that you can add to the student library. The student library will appear when the student logs in. You can give them any resources you can determine whether you want them to see some of the Spanish resources or only English. For my example, I'm going to filter out only my English items. This includes your math resources and your reading resources. So for my example, I'm going to allow my third graders to see the animated math models. And when I put this in there, they have access to all of the animated math models. But when I assign them an animated math model, I'll be able to assign them the specific one. But I want them to have this in the library, so maybe when they're at home, if they want to log in, they can check out some of the other ones. Or maybe they finish an activity in a math center and I allow them to go to the library to choose other activities that have not specifically been assigned to them. I think it's okay that I let them see the e-glossary. They could go check that out and the real world math videos. And then I have a standards practice book, the student edition. I'm going to allow that because perhaps they'll forget maybe their student edition practice book at school and they want to log in and see what their activity was supposed to be when they're at home. I'll allow them to have their textbook. The iTools are the manipulatives. I'm going to give them their math concept readers. If you follow the pacing guide and see any math expression I tools, you might need to add those in. I'll allow them to see the activity book that goes with that. There's Mega Math, which is some fun activity math games that you can assign them, but this will let them access all of them. Mega Math grade K through 6 is the same thing, so I don't need to give that to them again. In third grade, they have Storytown, and there's some Storytown assessments here. I don't want them to be able to see that until I'm ready to assign them an assessment, so I'm not going to allow them to see that. I think I'll allow them to be able to see their grammar practice book, their intervention readers. Now, depending on your grade level, you may not see the same thing. So just pick and choose what items you want them to be able to look at inside their library and to have access to. When you're finished, you're going to save this. Wait for it to refresh. And then we're going to move into our next option, which is to assign students. And while we're waiting for it to refresh, I'll explain that Omaha Public Schools worked with Think Central. And in September, they took any student that was actively enrolled with OPS, and they created an account for them. And so within your school, you will see all of the students that were there as of September when we filter out for your grade level. However, if a student is new to your building, then you're going to need to either contact an ECC, Cynthia Bowman or Val Skavanovic, if it's a student that was within OPS in September, because they might have an account out there and then they can roll that account into your class. If it's a brand new student to OPS, then you're going to create that account. And we're going to do that in just a little bit. So let's learn how to pull the students that are currently in the database for your school, because they were here as of September. My refresh has happened and so all of those will be in my students libraries and I'm going to go assign students. I'm going to filter out this is a list of all the students in my school and I'm going to look just for the ones in my grade so I selected third grade as my example and I'm going to choose find and that is only going to show me the third graders at my school. Now it used to be that teachers would use just generic accounts for students so you might see some of these generic accounts. I'm going to slide past those and I have some fake account names that I put in here and I just called them student A, student B, student C. So I'm going to go all the way down to find where they're at. Yours won't be all together like mine are going to be so I'll show you a little trick with your computer that you can do. If you have one student and then you want to add several students in you can put your mouse on one student if you're using a Mac, you hold down the Command key. If you're using a Windows computer, you hold down the Control key. And what it allows you to do is if you have that held down, it lets you pick and choose specific students 
without selecting all of them. Now I want these three students that I highlighted, so I'm going to choose add, not add all or that would accidentally add everybody in there. Those are the students that I want to add, so I'll push done. So you would do that until you found all of the students that you have. But let's say that you had a student that wasn't listed in there because they're brand new to OPS, and so you need to create an account for them. Up above in that Classes and Students tab, I'm going to go to the Users button, and I'm going to add the student in. Now, if you want to see if maybe they already have an account because perhaps they were at another school, you could go to Manage and search for them by their name. But I'm going to add a brand new student in. It's important that you choose the correct grade level because that will allow them to see all of those library resources that you chose. And you only need to fill out the five pieces of information that have the little red star behind them. So I'm going to pretend that this student's name is Student D. And then the way that they have it set up is all users use the same username and password conventions. They start with S for student. So every single person will start with S for student. And then you use the first five letters of their last name. So I actually need to change that up at the top. It should have been D student is the way I wanted to do it. So the username is going to be S for student, and then I'm going to count five letters of their last name. Now if they do not have five letters of their last name, let's say maybe they're Hill, you would do Hill and then you would put an X. If maybe their last name was Job, you would put XX. They need at least five characters. So mine's S-T-U-D-E and then their first initial of their first name. So my first name student is D, so I'm just gonna put the D there. And then you would have to go out and find their student number because the last part is you take the last three digits of their student number. So I'm going to pretend my student's number is one, two, three, four, five, six. So the last three digits are four, five, and six. So I've created the correct username. S for student, the first five letters of their last name, the first initial of their first name, and then the last three digits of their student number. Remember, you can go to Infinite Campus to get those student numbers. Now, I could retype that correctly on the password and retype password, but what I like to do is highlight it, and then you can do whatever way you like to copy and paste. You could go to Edit and Copy, you could do Command C, or you could do Control C if you're on a Windows. I'm going to copy that, I'm going to click in the password, and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to paste that in there. You won't be able to see that password, but it is pasting in what you copied. So I'm going to paste again. Do not fill out any of the No Child Left Behind data and select add. Now that student is added into Think Central's database, however, it is not in your class that you had created. So I'm going to go to my class and I'm going to manage my class now. To see the class, I can go into the link right here. I could go and look at the roster, but I can't assign the students there. I actually have to click on the title link. When it opens up, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where we assigned students the last time. So give it some time, let it do its thinking. Don't click on that link too many times. I already assigned all of the library resources, so I can skip that and choose Assign Students. So I'm going to scroll down and look for that one student that I created, student D. And I'll add that student in. I'll select done and say okay to save my changes. So now I've created my class and let's pretend that I have all of my students in that class and I want to get a roster that will have their usernames and passwords available so that I could either cut them out, put them on a, maybe a note card for each of them or whatever method I'm going to use to give them that username and password for when they go to their math centers or they take out a laptop or whatever way they're going to log in. So to, s to get your class roster, you click on the little radio button next to your class name and select View Class Roster. Here's my class roster. I can see I have four students, four records. You might have so many records that they fall on a second page, so there might be an arrow that shows a second page. And I could maybe write all of this down on a note card, but let's say that I actually want to export this. Down at the bottom is an Export Class Roster. I'll export it. You'll see that it jumped over to this Downloads window. 
I'll show you in a moment how you can get to that. You can also click on an individual student's last name and it's going to show you that information. So if you notice that you maybe put the wrong password for them or you put them in the wrong grade level, you could press and change it and then select save. But I'm going to show you now what that exported document looks like. You can usually find that up in the little arrow, but maybe you can't see it on yours. You might even have a downloads folder. My favorite way to make sure I can find it is this little blue face on a Macintosh computer opens up the finder. And then on the left side, I can see my downloads. If for any reason you can't see the downloads right there, you might have to click on the icon that has a little house on the left side. If you can't find downloads inside there, then you will need to contact your building tech support to find out where is the downloads folder. You might even have luck going into the little magnifying glass and typing for the downloads folder. But once you can find that downloads folder, I have my exported CSV file right here. And .csv files, when you double click on them, open up in Microsoft Excel. Now you could do just a simple file print and it's going to print out very similar to how it looks. But I'll just show you a couple other tricks that I like to do. One thing that I like to do is click on this little tiny triangle in the very top left corner between the 1 and A and that selects everything. And then I like to make this a little bit bigger so it's easier for my students to read. Now I have my toolbars where I can see the font right here and I can change it. I'm going to make that a size 16 so it's a little bit bigger. If you can't see those toolbars, you can go up to View and take a look at your toolbars here and add them in. So I have my standard and formatting toolbars on. You could also go in there and take a look for your formatting in the edit section to do your fonts. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in between the A and the B and there's this little tiny line that separates those and when I put my arrow on the line it turns to a two-headed arrow. If you give it a double click fast it will resize all of your columns and then let's say I want to cut these out as strips so I'm also going to come over between one and two where the row heading is and when it turns into two arrows I can click and I can drag that a little bit wider. And now that's going to allow me to print those and be able to cut those off as strips. And maybe I'll glue them to a little note card or whatever method you want to do to be able to give them to your students. When you go to File and Print, Excel does not automatically print the grid lines. It's just going to print out like this. If you really want those grid lines in there, you're going to need to select your page setup, go into the Sheet tab, and turn on the grid lines. That's up to you if you really want to see that. And then those grid lines are there and maybe that's easier for you to cut or to tell the students where they need to look for their username and password. So I'm going to cancel this. I'm not actually going to print it, but that would be one way to get your document so that your students were able to print it. Okay, that's what I'm going to show. Please check out some of the other videos where I show you how to start assigning the students some of the activities. But remember, when you're going to start assigning students, you first need to at least have a class created all of your students in that class. Create an account for any students that are not a part of your school's database yet. Contact Val Skavanovic or Cynthia Bowman if you think they've been in OPS and maybe they already have an account with some activities within it. Okay, look forward to more videos with Think Central.